is actually here. And I'm excited to announce that Thumper have just launched our newest range of portable dual battery packs in lithium. Now Thumper has been on the market for over 20 years, specialising in a portable battery pack of AGM cells. But now, these new lithiums have been a long awaited arrival to our range. Built with the highest quality LiPo4 lithium cells, these units are packed with features. Let's get into a few of them now. Now, the Thumper Lithium range is available from anywhere of a 12 amp hour, a 24, a 40, a 60, and the 90. We offer multiple of sizes to suit every single person's need for a dual battery system. Built with similar characteristics in each of the units, we're going to break them down one by one, just so you get a bit of an understanding of what might suit your needs best. Now, the 90. The 90 amp hour is the largest unit of our lithium battery pack range. 90 amp hours of lithium power here is equivalent to around about 150 amp hours of power in an AGM battery. That's a huge amount of power. When equating it back to running that 50 litre fridge, you're looking at about four days independent power before needing to recharge off any charging source, be it solar, 240 volt, or even the vehicle. Now, this unit is built with the Red Arc BCDC1225 DC battery charger. We're going to get into that in a moment, but we'll just have a look first at what other sockets are included on this unit. So, we have two cigarette type sockets, stainless steel sockets, marine grade, and each rated to 16 amps in capacity. They're a very high quality cigarette socket. Next in line, we have the unique two prong socket labeled as an angle. Now, yes, it's labeled as an angle fridge socket, but it's not just unique to angle fridges. So a lot of other fridges on the market these days will use the angle plug. You can purchase that socket with the plug on its own and adapt any of your appliances over to use that angle fridge plug if you would like to. It's rated to around about 15 amps at 12 volt. Next in line, we have the dual USB. The dual USB is an output only. It's rated at five volts. 2.4 amps and mainly designed for things like charging phones or your iPads, uh, docking stations or anything else that charges off of a USB. So we have next to it a little push button. This push button is designed to send power to the USB. When the push button is not pressed in, there will be no power to the USB. The reason why we do this is that USBs actually have a minor drawer on their own even with nothing plugged into it. So it's a good idea to be able to turn it off when it's not in use. Now, on the side here, the unit is built with a 2.1 mil input output plug. Now, this is both an inlet and an outlet. So it will allow you to charge via this plug and it will also allow you to use it for discharging. This is a very common plug on the market these days for things like LED lighting. So that might be something that you use this port for, running your LED lights in your annex or your awning, for instance. This is also a suitable plug that we actually sell a range of lithium battery chargers in our Thumper product range. Dire connecting directly into this socket will allow you to charge the unit via that lithium battery charger on 240 volt power. So both inlet and outlet and rated to around about 8 amps. Now next in line here, you have a large 175 amp Anderson. Rate, rated to only 90 amp hours. Keep in mind our unit itself is only rated to 90 amp hours in capacity. So the maximum discharge current we can get out of this unit at one given moment in time is via our largest connection here and it's 90 amps. That's what it's capped at. So mainly designed for running things like larger appliances, inverter for instance, around about a thousand watts of power. We're going to ignore this connection right now and we'll come back to it. On the other side of the unit, we have two Anderson connectors piggybacked on top of one another. Now these are 50 amp Anderson connectors, so maximum rating 50 amps. You can use this as an inlet or you can use it as an outlet. You might have a solar panel, for instance, that you want to plug in, 
or maybe an air compressor one day that you want to run from the unit or a fridge. They can be used as both inlet or outlet. Okay, now the gauge. The gauge is so comprehensive. So basically this gauge is designed around lithium batteries. So what it's going to read, the top corner you'll see your full amp hours that the unit is actually rated to. 90 amp hour unit will read 90 amp hours across the gauge here. When the unit is discharging though, that 90 amp hours will run down and you'll see how many amp hours is left in the unit at that given moment in time. Going back to the gauge, we also have a section here that will show you how many amps you're loading the unit up to. So if you had a fridge, for instance, that you had plugged in and was drawing one or two amps, you'll see a one or two amp rating here on your amp side. It will also show you how many watts that runs at. There's a section here that will also work as a runtime. So say, for instance, again, we look at having that fridge connected. If we had a fridge drawing one amp per every hour, you'll see how many hours you've got left of rem rem remaining runtime at that current load. So very comprehensive and it gives you a real good idea for exactly what you've got left in that battery pack and how long you're going to run for. There is also a percentage run here. So again, that will run down according to how much you've got left in the battery pack. When the unit is charging, you actually see a flash across the screen. So this whole screen here will flash. It will illuminate green constantly. That flash is normal, so don't be alarmed at that. It will remain flashing until the unit has reached its full charge. So until that unit reaches a full 90 amp hours of capacity again. When the unit is not in use at all, you will notice that there will be no backlight across the gauge. The gauge will still be illuminated as it is here now, but there won't have any green backlight. The green backlight will only illuminate on the gauge when the unit is either charging, when it's flashing, or when it's discharging and it will stay solid. Now, let's get into this DC charger. Okay, so let's talk about the DC charger. The Thumper Lithium 90 amp hour uses the BCDC 1225 battery charger. Now this is an in-vehicle battery charger and it will work to do three different things. Number one, it will act to boost a low voltage output from any vehicle to produce a nice clean charge rate through to your secondary battery system, your Thumper. The second component, it will work as a vehicle isolator meaning it will act to separate the secondary battery away from the starter battery when your ignition is turned off, meaning that your battery underneath the bonnet is solely reserved for the starting purposes of the vehicle and will never be drained along with the dual battery system. Now, the third component of a DC charger is a solar regulator. Now, a solar regulator is needed with any panel that is usually 20 watts or over. Panels actually start up around 20 volts. So you must use a regulator in order to ensure that you never overcharge the battery. Essentially, all you need to do is make sure that if you want to use the regulator inside the DC charger, you will need to use an unregulated solar panel. If you have a regulated solar panel, you would need to go into any other connection of the thumper. When I say any other connection, what this is, the DC charger is hardwired into the battery pack. It is protected internally with heat sink and circuit brake protection. We then install two external Andersons that are hardwired directly to the DC charger. One which is labelled alternator input and is designed solely for the input charge from the vehicle. Now we include a full wiring loom with this kit and the wiring loom is designed to work in conjunction with the DC charger. On the other side here, the other external Anderson is labelled unregulated solar input. Now this is the connection that you would use for your unregulated solar panel. Again, if the panel was regulated, you will need to use one of the recessed Anderson connectors or any other connectors on the Thumper battery pack. But, however, we would recommend to bypass the regulator in your solar panel, if you have one, and use this unregulated solar panel input 
as it will allow for the charge to be set to the lithium ca characteristics. Now, what does this factory pack have that others don't? Okay, connected to the DC charger, we also have an override. Now, what does an override mean? So basically, to understand what the override does, we need to understand how a DC charger would normally work. So, a quick schooling lesson. DC chargers are designed, when, as soon as you turn on your ignition and your main starter battery reaches around about 13.2 volts, the DC charger will open up the circuit and allow for you to start charging your secondary battery. That's a voltage activation. So it needs the starter battery to reach 13.2 volts to open the circuit. Now, when you turn off your ignition, the starter battery will need to drain and reach 12.7 volts, which is still fully charged, but it needs the voltage to hit 12.7 before the DC charger will allow for the charging to no longer occur. It, at that point, will cut off away from the starter battery, protecting the starter battery at that point. That's all well and good when we have vehicles that will produce that 13.2 volts and allow for the DC charger to engage. But what happens if you have one of these newer model vehicles that has a very low alternator output? The only time that we can actually fix this problem is by overriding the voltage side of things in the DC charger. What that means is we go to having that DC charger be ignition activated. Ignition activated means that we switch on with the ignition and we turn off with the ignition. So this will happen immediately regardless of the voltage of the starter battery. Now this override switch allows for this ignition override to be activated from the, from the DC charger. So essentially to use this connection here, we always recommend to install the wiring loom that we, that we give you included with the unit. What that will allow for again is a relay type system. So that wiring loom that we include will allow for the line to start charging with the ignition on and the line to isolate with the ignition is off. So that will protect your starter battery. This override switch here, by pressing it in, it will illuminate blue. Once it's illuminated blue, we know that we're over, we've overridden the voltage side of the DC charger. At that point, the DC charger will work immediately, regardless of any voltage in the charging system. It will also then continue to be linked to anything that's on that line. So if you turn off the ignition, then the only time this will actually be isolated away from the vehicle's starter battery is when you do hardwire that vehicle loom into the vehicle because that loom is what will separate you from the car cranking battery. By pressing this off again, it will no longer illuminate blue. And what that means is we go back to the voltage side of things. So the DC charger again will engage and disengage according to the voltage of that starter battery. Now, if this doesn't make sense, that's okay. You're welcome to call us and we can explain anything further. Otherwise, check out our literature that's available on our website as well. And this can go into some further information about this connection. Basically, all you need to know is that it works to override the voltage of the DC charger to allow for it to start charging as soon as the ignition is switched on and isolate as soon as the ignition is off. Thanks guys for listening. Check out our next video.